Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we are talking about Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. Schweblin. <laughs> I don't think there's any other way to pronounce that. Schweblin. Uh, Samantha Schweblin is a author who's originally from Buenos Aires um, that now lives in Berlin and Megan McDowell is the translator of the book and Megan lives in Chile even though she's from I think Kentucky but this and she do, she does a lot of she does a lot of literary translations from what it says uh, Megan McDowell is a let's read both their bios um, Samantha Schweblin was chosen by Granta as one of the 22 best writers in Spanish under the age of 35 she is the author of three short story collections which have won numerous awards including the prestigious Juan Rolfo Prize and been translated into 20 languages. Fever Dream is her first novel and is a finalist for the Mario Vargas Losa Prize and winner of the Tigre Juan Prize. Originally from Buenos Aires, she lives in Berlin. About the translator. Megan McDowell is a literary translator from Kentucky, I was right, um, who has translated many contemporary authors from Latin America and Spain, including Alejandro Zambra. She lives in Chile. There's, there's a couple things I want to touch on first. The only negatives I want to touch on are pretty big negatives in my, in my, uh, in my opinion. Uh, the biggest problem is the book is written in a very, very vague style. Um, I would say that it even gives Peter Straub a run for his money, as vague as he is. The thing is, with Straub, he he writes such long works that you kind of get into the the, the you kind of roll with the punches, as it were. You get into a uh, not routine. You get comfortable. Sorry, all that I said, all that to say, you get comfortable with his his vagueness. This one, the book's only 180 pages, which this will be important. Also, you see how see how I, well the the font is small, but see how much margin there is on the page. Now. For reference, here's a regular hardcover, and here's Fever Dream next to it. So it's, and then if you have the like a like a paperback, a uh, trade paperback, it is it's tiny. It's like the uh, it's like in the miso soup from Ryu Mirakami or Piercing from the same author. It's very tiny, very compact. Um, it took me about two hours to read the entire book. It's 181 pages. If it was a normal size, like, trade paperback, it would probably end up being anywhere between, I'd say, 100 and 120 pages. So they really, really used the font and the formatting style to make the book as long as it is. Normally that isn't a problem. Um, the reason why I bring that up is it does, you don't have enough length to actually get comfortable with the author's style. This reads and feels like a short story. It literally has no chapters. There's not even a page break in the entire book. It's all one continuous train of thought. Um, and that's cool. That's fine. She, she did a very good job of it, but I still had to stop in certain places. And there were natural stops, even though she, the formatting didn't give you a natural stop. That brings me to my next problem, which is the price of admission. I know why it's $16 for this tiny book. I understand why. I mean, we're not dealing with Stephen King here, but we are dealing with a translated author. Stephen King charges, you know, 20 bucks for a tiny book like this, or, you know, well, he always charges 20 bucks. It's never 16 but he charges that because he is a well-established author that people will buy no matter what. So they are going to take advantage of that. Here they're trying to pay the translator and the author and make money. Riverhead, yeah, Riverhead Books is trying to pay, trying to make back the money from the translator, trying to make back the money, well, trying to pay the, get, make the author some profits and trying to make profits themselves. The problem with that is, it is not a $16 experience. Um, I, I really hate to discount somebody's hard work, but I think a $10 paperback would have been a better option. Um, now, mind you, on Amazon, I got this for 13 I believe. Usually with the translated novels, especially like Mirakami, uh, whatever their, uh, whatever the price on the back of the book is, it's usually not too far away from that um, because they have to, 
the, because the book itself is so expensive, they can't take too much of a loss on it. Whereas, uh, with, like, let's say, a, let's just throw this out there, like a James Patterson book, if it's $10, you go over to Amazon, it's 5 or 6 bucks. So I didn't pay the full 16, I paid 13, but still I feel like I didn't get my money's worth. And the my friend Tracy who I read this with um she but basically she well not basically she got it from the library and I kind of wish I had too. It is a good experience. It is great at giving you a feeling of dread. I just don't think the price of admission is right. So now, let's go into the book itself. The, as I said, this book is very vague. Um, I, I feel like I'm going to have to read it more than one time to understand it. The problem with that is I don't want to. You know, I don't, I, I, I wasn't enthralled with the entire experience. But there is one scene in here with a boy and some ducks. That's all I'm going to tell you. That really bothered me. Um, I was sitting there, uh, it was on the, on the edge of my seat, I guess on the edge of my bed because I was laying down, but this one scene, it locked me in, and I, I felt, it's one of those things where I felt like I couldn't escape the visuals, and any time that happens, you know, a book skyrockets for me, um, the, just like Night Film has a scene like that uh, with, a, with something on a bridge. And it's stuck with me ever since I've read it. If you guys are a fan of the channel, you guys will have known. I've mentioned it numerous times. Now I have this scene with this boy and the ducks from Fever Dream. Um, there's also a scene in Haruki Minakami's In the Miso Soup, which I just mentioned because of the size, that uh, involves an ear in a restaurant. Um, that bothered me also. But that bothered me in a different way than this bothered me. This, but the scene in this book bothered me in the same way that Marisha Passell's night film bothered me. It's there is nothing really overtly spoken. It's not said, "Hey, look, here's this thing that you should fear or feel dread about." It just happens, um, and it, it. I think that alone is a sign of an immense talent. I would love to read Schweblin's short fiction. Um, because this whole book read a lot like Mariana Enriquez's uh, collection, The Thing Things We Lost in the Fire. The reason why I love that one so much, and I'm not really in love with this one, is because this style fits a short story, whereas it doesn't fit a novel or a novella. Um, I'm probably thinking this is about 20, 25,000 words, if I'm doing my math correctly, um, which is nowhere near a novel. But... But also they call Of Mice and Men a novel, and it, that's not a novel evil either. It's only 100 pages. Um, once again, this isn't to discount the author's work. It's just I don't feel that this style works for a novel, um, or a longer work especially. Especially not a work without chapters. Um, it felt I didn't have any time where I felt comfortable. There were natural stops, like changing locations and whatnot, but... There was never a time where I felt comfortable stopping just my own OCD because there was no chapter breaks or page breaks. Um, so, at the end of the day, I'm going to give this three stars. Um, the, two, the two problems I talked about, the price of admission, first off, so definitely probably grab it in, you know, if you have an extra audiobook code, um, if you can find it uh, used, you know, that kind of thing. And I hate to say that for an author because they're not making any money off that. So, you know... The, audiobook. If it goes on sale, grab it. I wouldn't pay more than $10 for the paperback myself. Um, so that's, the, the price of admission is going to knock off a star. The other thing that's going to knock off a star is the style in which it's written. It's written like a short story, but it goes on too long for a short story. The story itself doesn't go on too long, but it's too long for the style. There are too many questions. I got bogged down with trying to figure out if this meant something, if that meant something, or if it really was all just the, the problem that arises in the story. And again, I don't, I, I don't want to give you, you know, I don't like spoilers, um, not even, you know, even minute ones. Uh, but if you, you go into this book expecting just a dreadful, <laughs> a, an experience full of dread, not dreadful, an experience full of dread, and that's pretty much it. 
um, then you should have a good time as long as you're not paying full price. So the vague style uh, that works for short stories not longer works, and the uh, yeah, and the price of admission would be my only two things. But that's a star each. I'm going to take off. So three stars. Have you read Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin? If so, let me know down in the, in the comments below. Did you like it? Did you hate it? What did you think? Um, but until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!